morning. We are going to be looking at uh, some meditative devotional um, issues for tomorrow's sharing in the Lord's Table uh, that we will be doing around 10 o'clock on Zoom for all the Communion Life people. And um, we will be sending out a uh, Zoom meeting number. Uh, hopefully not have the same troubles we did last Sunday, but it seems like Zoom had a little trouble um, all the way around, so I don't think it was just our uh, own problems. Um, I want to read from the book of Revelation. Now, a lot of times Revelation is looked at in light of eschatology or end times, the return of the Lord, and although there is that in there, um, it was not given uh, to be able to predict the times that the Lord would return. I believe it was given to build up the faith of the church during times of persecution and struggles and suffering, especially in the conflict they have with the world. And rather than look to human devices to uh, obtain our rights or defend ourselves or um, protect ourselves, uh, the book of Revelation shows us how we need to be strong and bold witnesses uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, live lives, godly lives, regardless of the cost in the world we live in, and to uh, to represent our Lord and Savior uh, through faith and courage and strength. And so um, I'm going to be reading uh, out of chapter 3 and uh, dealing with the letter to the church of the Laodiceans. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write the words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, you are neither cold nor hot, would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourselves, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And, and the main verse I want to center in on here is verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. He will have supper with us. The word there is, is the word for supper, to dine with us, to have a meal with us. Um, this is not an evangelistic verse as it's often used sometimes by, by preachers. Um, it, it is calling saints back to communion not sinners to salvation. I'm not opposed to having sinners be called to salvation. But he's writing to the church of Laodicea. And although they're in a very, very sorry state, they are still the church. And he's calling them uh, back. They have fallen so far that um, they have lost perspective of uh, what are the spiritual, spiritual truths of who they really are and what life is all about with them. 
Uh, we um, look at prosperity in America as, uh, as a blessing of God, and it is a blessing of God, but it can also be a curse when that prosperity comes out of friendship with the world rather than friendship with God. And the, and the Church of Laodicea, I believe, had fallen into that state. They were neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm. There's a um, using a metaphor of the temperature of water to explain the spiritual condition of the church in Laodicea. And um, lukewarm, I believe, uh, is another way of implying that they had become apathetic in their faith, that they had become passive in their walk as believers, and, and they were uh, content within the wealth of the world and in the life of the world, rather than being willing to suffer uh, with Jesus Christ uh, outside the gate. Um, and so they were seeing themselves as rich and uh, well-dressed and being able to see, and instead they were naked and blind and poor spiritually. So God had one perception of them, and they had another. When we get down to verse 20, when it says, I stand at the door and knock, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and have supper with him. I believe uh, one of the aspects that is being spoken of here is that of the communion table or the Lord's table or the covenant meal. I believe that the church had fallen into such a state that there was no longer a covenant meal being shared with the Lord Jesus Christ as they had been commanded to do to proclaim his death. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that the Laodicean church did not celebrate uh, the Lord's table on the Sabbath day when they gathered together. That's not, uh, I believe, the problem here. Uh, they very well were going through the uh, forms of religion, but I think they had fallen so far away from fellowship with God and had embraced so much fellowship with the world, and according to James, to be friends with the world is to be at enmity with God, that Jesus Christ was no longer fellowshipping with them in a covenant meal. It was a religious observance. It was not a true covenant meal being shared with the two parts of the covenant, the church and the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, as a result, um, they were in serious, serious um, state of decline. So much so that they're threatened with discipline and, and uh, possibly even more. It, the picture of Jesus not taking part in the church's gathering is what we need to see here. It's like if we come on Sunday morning and we sing the songs and we share in the Lord's table and we do all of the churchy things we do, the religious things we do, yet it is devoid of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are so in love with the world that he will not uh, embrace us in our fellowship. He will not join us in our meal. He stands outside. Uh, they, the picture is almost of them relegating him to the peripherals. And we do that. We can we can keep our, our faith, uh, our, our actions of our faith, our observances of our religion um, very diligently and at the same time relegate the Lord Jesus Christ to the peripheral area of our faith. Because if he gets too close, he's going to mess with some of the things that we love to do. If we've fallen in love with the pleasures of the world, uh, 
and Christ uh, removes those pleasures from us, uh, we're going to be upset. So let's keep him at a safe distance. Um, there's a consequence for this, obviously, because he, he says, uh, whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. The scary part of that is if, if there's no discipline and reproof, there's no love. He still has a love for the church of Laodicea as a whole, but he is calling them uh, to make a stand, to get things right, to repent and turn back to him. So what does this really have to do with communion? Well, let me go to Luke 22 and read uh, verse 20 of Luke 22. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this cup is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. That word eaten there is the same word that we get uh, in the book of Revelation, where it says, uh, I will come into him and eat with him. I will come in and have supper. So after they have suppered, uh, the cup of the covenant of the blood was shared after they had eaten of the body of Christ. Uh, the cup of the blood of Christ, the representation in the juice was to be shared in that Passover meal. And um, that, I believe, helps us understand what's taking place in the book of Revelation. It helps us understand that um, a church that had become apathetic and passive in the living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if not in the ceremony of the celebration of their, of their faith, um, was in need of opening the door and letting the Lord Jesus Christ come in and sit at table with them and commune, have that fellowship, that communion, that koinonia once again. And realizing that when the Lord is invited into our lives that way, that which we love of the world will have to go out because those two things don't consist. Love of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of the world. Uh, the gospel says we have an option. We can either serve mammon or we can serve God. You cannot serve mammon and God together. They are opposed to one another. And, uh, and that mammon is representative of the pleasures of the world. And so uh, we, I believe, are being encouraged. As we gather tomorrow for our communion uh, table and our celebration of the Lord's table, uh, let us examine our hearts tonight and tomorrow morning early as to whether or not we have put Jesus on the peripheral, if not completely in our life, in areas of our life, because we know if he comes into those areas, he's going to demand a change, and we don't want to have that change. We want to keep that free. And, and so um, the Spirit of God will do that for you and I, so that when we come together, uh, he won't have to knock on the door of anyone's life to say, let me back into the center of it but he will be there and we will uh, together, even if over the technology of Zoom, in the spirit, we will together celebrate uh, the wonderful Lord's table. So look forward to seeing uh, all of you that will be Zooming in at 10 o'clock tomorrow. May your meditations today and tonight be a blessing to you. Bye.